Okay, welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to add facial hair onto a person or a character if you would like to know how to create that in Photoshop. Now creating hair isn't that difficult, but it is going to require us to learn a few new things. Now to get started, what I'd like you to do is find a stock image online or maybe something that you have available and then go ahead and load it into Photoshop. Once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and create a single strand of hair. To do this, what I'd like you to do is first create a new layer. Now I mentioned this briefly before, but Photoshop works in layers. And right now we only have the background layer. But if I go to this button over here, this is the Create New Layer button, and I click on that, I'm going to create a brand new layer. And on this layer, what we're going to do is we're going to add a single strand of hair. So make sure it's selected, and then head over to your brush tool, and this is the brush tool over here. Click on that, and you're going to want to make sure a couple things first. One, make sure that the hardness is set to 100%, because we're going to turn this piece of hair into a brush, and brushes work best at 100%. And also try to make sure that your size makes sense to what you're drawing. So right now I'm just drawing a single strand of hair on this character, so I'm going to use a 1px size. But if your image is larger, you might want to increase that. And remember also we can increase or decrease by using the brackets on the keyboard and by just tapping them. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in a piece of facial hair, and that's too thick, so I'm going to do a edit undo brush tool. I'm going to go a little bit smaller I guess and let's try that now. Still a little too thick. So I guess I'm going to go with the default size and I'm just going to draw in a single strand of hair. Kind of like that. So that's what I want. Now we're going to go ahead and start making that into a brush. To begin I would like you to create another layer and I want you to grab this layer, so this is the new layer we created, and drag it underneath the previous layer that we just created. And on this layer what we're going to do is we're going to create a white background around this piece of hair. So click on the marquee tool over here and kind of draw a box around the piece of hair. Like that. Let go of it. And then I want you to go ahead and press control and backspace Oops. and you're going to transform that into a white background in the back if you just press and hold down control and press backspace you're going to create that alternatively if that's not working for you you can hold down shift and press backspace and you're going to open up these fill options and just make sure that your fill is set to white and that will give you the same effect as doing the control and backspace option Okay, there we go. We have that selected. Go ahead and then click on layer 2. So if you click on it, you're going to notice it highlight itself over here. And then I want you to go over to Edit, and we're going to Define Brush Preset. Click on that, and let's go ahead and give our brush a name. So we'll go ahead and call this uh, Facial Hair. That's usually a good name. And then click OK. So hopefully now we've gone ahead and created the brush. Let's go ahead and test if we have or not. I'd like you to create another new layer. This will be layer 3. I'd like you to press B on the keyboard. That's going to automatically switch you to the brush tool. And because we just created that brand new hairbrush, this should already be loaded in, which it is. And you can click around. Whoops. Let me click there. Press B. I think I'm on. the wrong, whoops, I got my marquee selection still on. Okay, press B, and you'll notice that we are able to immediately click down hairs, like so. Uh, you don't want to hold it down or you're just going to create a steady stream brush, but we can also create hair. Now, in situations like this where I just created a bunch of different hairs, and if I try to just do edit undo brush tool, you'll notice that you can only go one step back. The way to fix that is if you hold down control on your keyboard, hold down ALT on your keyboard and then press Z and you'll be able to go back as far as you'd like so long as that was a change that was done 
you know, in the past before you saved. So we've done that. We have our brush selected. And if you forgot the hotkey, it is Control, Alt, and then press the Z. And B is the hotkey for brush. Now that we've created the brush, we're going to go ahead and make it look more like hair. I would like you to go ahead and select all three of your layers. You can hold down the shift key to do that. And then we're going to dump them in the trash. So press on the trash. Would you like to delete all the layers? Yes, now they've been deleted. And we don't need them anymore because we've gone ahead and created the brush. But what we can do is we can edit the brush to make it look more like real hair. Head over to Window and then go over to your brush option. You can alternatively press F5 and we're going to have a number of things that we can actually do to our brush to make it look more realistic. So the first thing I want you to do is head over to Shape Dynamics, click on that, and I want you to increase the size jitters up to let's say 100%. What size jitters does is it allows you to create a number of variation within the brush. So let me go ahead and give you a demonstration of that. If I adjust the size of my screen to 200% and I hold down the brush, you're going to notice now there is variation in the hair follicles that are hitting the face. So now that you've seen that, let's also go ahead and add a little bit of angle to our hair because not every hair follicle is going to be the same, maybe 7-8%. Let's go ahead and try 11 actually. If I click on the screen, you're going to notice now there's some variation among the hair particles. Actually, that's a hair too much, so I'm going to lower it down to 8%. And yeah, that's looking better. We also want to add a little bit more roundness to it, so the roundness jitter is actually a really useful tool, and I'm just going to crank that all the way up. And now you're going to notice that we are able to produce rounder hair. I'm actually going to lower that. These are, you should really go ahead and try a lot of these settings out because you can actually come up with a lot of decent effects. So I'm going to stick with around 50% for that. Okay, so we're getting more and more looking like hair. What I'd like you to do next is head over to scattering. And we're going to do a couple more things. We're going to add some scatter. And let's actually turn on both axes. And let me go ahead and draw some hair. You can see how it looks. And if I activate the scattering, you know, and I move the hair, you're going to notice that now it's spaced more apart. And this makes more sense with realistic hair because hair isn't all, you know, like a brush. It's more spaced apart. And actually, just with shape dynamics and scattering on its own, you'll notice that we're able to create a much more nicer, much more realistic looking hair type when we go ahead on a surface. And that's only the half of it. So anyway, that's going to conclude this part. I will see you in the second part where we're going to wrap up using the hair tool or the brush tool. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye.